Hey everybody, and welcome to another Rust hosting tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about how to run events on your server. And you could see this as a how to run events uh, tutorial, or as a how to work with plugins and plugin dependencies, because certain plugins need other plugins to uh, work together for things to work. Um, and this event manager is a really, really good example because it uses several plugins and you have to set them up all correctly for it to eventually hopefully work. So I'm going to do a little bit of explaining what we're going to do and then we're going to do it. If you just want to see a certain topic or want to rewatch something, there are as always video chapters in the description. You can just click on that um, and see whatever you want to see. If you don't want to watch the whole thing, that's fine too. So first of all, we got the kids plugin. And that is going to give people weapons and clothing at the right moment. So when the round restarts or when they respawn, when the round starts, etc. So then we got the zone manager and the zone manager is used to create zones. You can create zones in anywhere in the map. So open fields, use a red town, whatever. If you want to make a deathmatch in the dome, you could do that. You have to basically set those boundaries in the zone manager. Uh, or you can create your own, build them in the map and then create a zone manager, create an area around it. Or um, you can make them in a uh, program like Fortify and then just paste them into your map. And lastly, we got the spawn database. And once you got that arena set or you made that zone in that red town, whatever you want, you then have to run around and manually set the spawn points for people to spawn in. And it will create a spot up, um, spawn database, basically, as the name said. And also that's being used by the event manager. The event manager uses the EM interface to show you stuff and give you a user interface so you can click on stuff and set settings. And it uses the data from the kids zone and spawn a database. Um, and then you can load in a event mode, which is also its own plugin. And all those things together should hopefully teleport people to the correct zone or arena, give them the right weapons and clothing using the kids. And then also, of course, let them spawn at the right places on the right team, etc. Um, using the spawn database and the event modes and the event manager um, make sure everything on the back end um, or should make sure that everything on the back end is working so people get added to the, the right teams and get the right clothing etc so what did i do i set up my own server um, and if you don't know how i will link a playlist in the video description that has four videos in it the first one is how to set up your own server the second one is how to make it modded. The third one is how to make it public so it shows up in the server list and people can join it. So then you have, should have your own server. And then the fourth one is the 15 most asked questions and problems people run into. So if you watch all those and you still run into a problem, message me, contact me somehow, and I will try to help you. Um, this will be the fifth video for that playlist. Um, so let's dive right in. Um, I didn't do anything else. I just set up my server, made it modded. I downloaded the right plugins and um i didn't install anything yet so we're going to do that right now okay so if you go to umod.org you can see that i have all the right plugins already opened it says here it depends on emi interface so you're going to open it in a nether tab or what nether in a nether tab <laughs> you're going to open it up download it and make sure um you got the rust kits you got the spawn database you got the zone manager and um then you're also going to have to, if you search for event manager here, you will see you get team deathmatch, last man standing, arena deathmatch, capture the flag, and you also have chopper survival. So those are all the um, game modes you could choose, and you can also just open those up and download them. I got those right here. I got the chopper survival because that's one of the events that I can show you by myself. Um, like a team deathmatch or deathmatch without any other people is going to be really very weird to demonstrate. It uses the EMI interface, so you have a graphical user interface. The event manager itself is like the big thing that manages anything. I got the kits, I got the spawns, and I got the zone manager. So, so I dragged them all in, and I got some errors in the beginning. And the errors were saying that it couldn't find any spawns, and it couldn't find event manager, and etc. And I just threw them all in and now it says it said here uh, at the top it says uh, what does it say oh, yeah, event manager plugin is waiting for requirements to be loaded em interface so while that was still being loaded in now it's loaded and then it says um, loaded zone manager loaded event manager and it says it couldn't find a default config which is okay because we didn't make one 
it couldn't find a kit which is okay because we didn't make one and it said no auto events found in red red is bad yellow is okay um it says no auto events found which is fine because we didn't set an auto event so all these red errors here are like redundant because it was still loading in the em interface and while that has done everything loaded in properly and all these errors are just saying we didn't set up things correctly which is true because we didn't do anything yet okay so first off we're going to make some kits so this is going to spawn weapons and add some clothing so we're going to go to the kits website it says here admin comments so we're going to add one so kit add name kit add name test you created a new kit yay so we're going to give ourselves some weapons thompson clothing why not Oh, 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 yes. And some ammunition. Yes, full stack, some flippers, slippers, whatever. Okay, so now we're going to do Schles kit items. And it says the items were copied from your inventory. If you do Schles kit out level two then even if it somehow got into your slash kit list you need to add it manually but even if it somehow ends up here people cannot get it because they don't have the right authentication so then um i think that's it because we made it we gave it a name we added the items and we set it so people cannot get it so that's basically the kits done well, next up is the zone manager so let's let's well let's look for a zone let's just uh, i don't know use this little thingy here as a zone that should work so we're going to go to the zone manager and we're going to go to the admin comments or chat comments whatever and it says zone add well let's do that it says you created a new zone and you can see these blue uh, and black apparently depending on where you look at it lines around it and it's not really big enough because i wanted to go all the way around the uh hangar thingy so i'm going to stand inside the zone so i set the zone to 50 50 50 and now you can see that it actually goes kind of hard to see probably but it actually goes around the whole hangar. So I just did slash zone, inside of the zone, size, quotes, and then 50, 50, 50. If you want to make it bigger, do like 60, 60, 60. If you want to make it smaller, do 30, 30, 30, whatever. You get it. So make sure whatever zone you want, it really encompasses all around it. It does disappear after a little bit. If you just do slash zone, inside of the zone, it comes back. So now you have to set up what kind of rules you want inside of your zone. So if you go down here, it says flag types. You can um, set all these things to false and true. So allow uh, crafting, allow dropped items, whatever, whatnot. You can just go in through here and see what kind of rules you want to be applied inside of this zone. So people can still just walk in and out of here, um, but those rules will apply in this zone. So it's not like a hard barrier, but it is these zones do apply. So there's also one for uh, non-destruct or something, uh, no stable. So if you have an arena that's like really intricate and you can just ignore the stability, you could paste it in. Um, you can actually paste it in with no stability, but if, if you build it inside here, inside the zone, you could set no stability true. Um, what you could do is I have some pre-made things that I always apply. You can just go into your, um, into your chat and set all these things after each other. So I got three lines. We should do zone 
name test so now we got a zone named test we got a kit named test and uh let's see spawn database so the next thing is going to go to the spawn database and just see what we got to do uh, wow it actually doesn't give any info so i'm glad i still have my comments here <laughs> um so let's see if this still works it doesn't actually does it say no it doesn't give any help or things so let's see if this still works stand somewhere uh in here so i'm going to make a spawn point here so first going to create the spawn file spawns new oh i did that a little bit quick i'm sorry slash spawns space new and it says you're now creating a new spawn file and then it's really easy just go to spawn or just do slash spawn at and i'm going to copy that sorry slash spawns at copy that and it says edit spawn number one so i'm going to run over here and i know the the zone goes all the way around this so i should be safe making one like over here it says edit spawn point number two we're going to run over here doesn't really matter and make a third uh, and you can make as much as you want spawn point so we got one over there one in the back and one over here you can see them also on the floor if you do uh, slash spawns show you can see all of them you can see the numbers um, <clears throat> so that should be good so we just do spawn slash spawns save and then test so it says three spawns points saved into test. So now we got the kit set up with a kit called test. We got a zone manager set up um, with the zone called test spawn database set up with three spawn points with the name test. All very creative. We got the event manager set up. It's already using the EMI interface because we saw it got loaded in properly. This is set up. Now we just need to actually set up the event manager with the event mode and see if it works so we are going to go to slash event we go to the right here we go to create we're going to change and it says chopper survival because that is the only plugin that we got in our folder and it says event type chopper survival next one kit change well we made one name test so it's here test spawn file well we made one name test so it's already there Spawn type, random or uh, cons consecutive. Um, so if it goes from spawn point one to two to three, or if you get a random spawn point, so it's set to random, it says, what zone do you want? Well, if we click change, it already says test. So it, it basically works for itself and it has a zone ID. Um, it doesn't say test here, but trust me, that's the zone. Game mode, normal or battlefield. And I think with battlefield, you also have the option to select your, um, you can have several kits and people can select the kits, etc. Minimum players, one, maximum players, whatever, of course, five, 10,000 enemies to spawn, uh, one, rounds to play, one, we're gonna make it easy. Enemies to spawn is how many helicopters is going to spawn in, um, for uh for a round um and if you do three i think it will do one in the first round two in the second round and a three in the third round depending also on how many rounds you have to play um just mess around with it class selector disabled oh i think that's i don't know what the battlefield is then just set it to normal or mess around with it um disable item pickup you can do that if you want to um respawn type none so we're going to save this You've successfully, successfully saved, uh, created a new event named Chopper Survival. So if we now go to um, admin and we go into event config change, it says here Chopper Survival. So you can have several and then you can select it. So now it's selected. If you go to um, admin here and you click on event status and you click open, it says pending. And if you now go to the chat, it says Chopper Survival is now open. Type slash event space join. Slash event. Oh, wait. Let me stand somewhere else. 
Uh, just give me some stuff in my inventory. So this is different than what I will be having in the arena. And I do slash event join. It says void boss has, voice bot has joined the event. And as a player you can of course join. And then the admin has to or go into the user interface and click start. Or you can just do event start. And then everybody who joined will be teleported to the arena. And as you can see I got the spawn point here in the back. And I got the flippers on. And the bullets and the right ammo. It says the event will start in 30 seconds. So I'm going to cheat. And I'm going to put god mode on. And give myself a little bit of a better weapon. Because I didn't really think this through. Because I want to show you that it actually teleports you back. And it all works. Oh, here we go. Oh. Oh. So a helicopter should be spawning in now. Helicopter. Oh, here we go. So there it is. So it actually shows the HP um, of the helicopter in the top left, which is like a cool addition. You see, you can shoot the rotors, you can shoot the main body. It is a little bit glitchy, as you can see. Um, but it does work. It teleported me back. I got my normal stuff back. There are a lot of different game modes you can play, and all of them have left their little quirks and things to set up. For example, the uh, capture the flag, the first spawn point needs to be the one for the flag. And with gun game, you have to set up a special kit list that it basically runs through while playing the gun game. So every time you kill someone, you get the next gun. And there's also a downgrade gun, which is like a melee weapon. If you uh, kill someone with it, they get uh, sent back a tier, um, set back a tier. Is that how you say it? Yeah, you know what I mean? So, um, that is basically how you work with dependencies. It was kind of easy because we didn't have to go into the config files and really tinker with the backend code of it or the backend settings because everything here is being used with the or is being controlled with the EM interface. So that's really convenient and it's kind of easy once you get the hang of it. I will post all the comments um, and all the admin things that I used, especially for the spawn points because it's not even on the website anymore. So I'm happy I still got my old notes. <laughs> Um, I will post those in the video description. Um, you can go back and watch some chapters if you missed anything or watch it again. If anything is unclear, please comment below and I will try to help you. If you want to see a specific topic or something that I didn't cover yet, um, I've got a lot of questions for the uh, Rust admin thingy. Maybe I'll do a tutorial on that. Comment below if you want to see that, uh, how to work with the Rust admin tool and what you can do with it. Um, I hope I helped you out. Good luck. Have fun with your events. Let me know if you if you got it working or not. I'm out. As always, thank you for watching. Peace. <coughs> Sorry, neighbor. Thank you very much for watching. Click on the left thumbnail for my most recent uploads or click on the right for a video that suits you best. As always, have a very nice day. I'm out. Peace. <coughs> <laughs>